Hello and welcome to the Django Celery Mastery course. Just a quick reminder, if you like this course and would like to access the source code and more, you can access this course on Udemy. The link to the course, which should provide the best price, is in the video description. OK, so let's start our journey with task routing by setting up two tasks with two routes and two Celery workers. Now here we're just building on top of what we have already created. We have our Django app here. We have our Redis backend and our message broker. And we have Celery 1 and Celery 2, our two workers. So if we try to imagine initially how we set up our infrastructure, we had the Django app sending tasks to the message broker. Now this message broker provided a way of storing the tasks and the Celery worker would then pick up the task and then execute the task in our Celery worker here. Now, if we think about how tasks came into the message broker, that would generate some sort of queue, first in, first out basis. So the first task that the message breaker receives, that's the first task that will then be picked up by the Celery worker. So here, what we're going to do is to create two queues. And by doing that, we're able then to send from our message provider a task that's then going to be placed in Q1 or Q2. And of course, we're going to then create two workers, which we have already actually created. Each worker is going to listen for individual queues. So this way, we're going to be able to route different tasks to different queues to be then picked up and executed by different Celery workers. Now, just hypothetically, maybe the first worker here, Q1, that might be related to tasks, uh, image tasks, for example. So we may have this worker here, which is on a dedicated server, dedicated to image manipulation. So it has all the hardware and software related to that, which is going to optimize those tasks being executed. We can imagine then task two, maybe that is for machine learning tasks. So that's going to be picked up by a worker, which is on a dedicated machine, hardware and software for machine learning processing. Okay, so back in the Docker Compose file, first of all, we'll start here. What we're going to do is extend the command, the Celery command, to utilize the queue. Okay, so queue for queue. And then we just need to specify the queue. So this is going to be Q1. So here we specify that this Celery worker is going to be looking for tasks that are going to be queued in Q1. And we then can do the same thing again. For our secondary, second salary worker here, we'll just extend the command and we we'll set that to Q2. So that's how we're going to differentiate which worker will look for which queue in the message broker to pick up tasks related to these different queues. Let's jump back into the Django app. We'll go back into the new app here. Um, actually, let's go to salary first. Let's just remove in salary salary in our Django app. Let's remove the task from our celery file here. And we go ahead. Notice that we are using celery, the name celery there, and it's okay. But that's irrelevant for now. Let's go into the, the tasks here. And we create two tasks. So we call this task one. And then we go ahead and create the second task, which is task two. Okay, so let's move back into into Celery here, and we'll go ahead, this is in our Django app. Let's go ahead now and register two different routes. So we're going to apply the task to the route. We're going to assign the task to different, sorry, queues. That's the approach here. So app.config, and then this time we're going to use, so actually, wrong. So app comp I was getting confused there. Task uh, underscore root. Okay, so now we can assign some roots. So first of all, uh, we we have here we have here the actually we have new app. So new app inside a new app we have tasks, and then inside of there we have task one. Okay, so we're going to assign this to Q1. So 
so Q. Apologies, that needs to be within the single, the key value, Q, and then Q1. So we've assigned that task to Q1. So we can do the same thing again for task two. So I'll just copy and paste that. Kind of need a comma there. Paste that. So we would name now task two to Q2. So we now have two tasks, two queues assigned, and we're now going to set that. We have now set that to create a new task and to assign it to Q1 or Q2. Okay, so we could go ahead now and recreate the images and containers, but I can tell you that's not necessarily going to work here. So the problem we're going to have here is that we're defining a task that's in new app dot task dot task one. Now in our Django application, that's not a problem because we have this module here, new app, and then we have the sorry the new app, and then we have the task module here, and inside of that, obviously, we have task one and task two. Now at the moment the worker doesn't know anything about these tasks. Now, of course, the first worker will do. Remember, we're using this code base for the first salary worker. So in actual fact, the code base is shared. So that salary worker will have absolutely no problem potentially finding these tasks or finding the tasks associated to it, which was task one. But the standalone salary worker here knows nothing about these tasks. So we have to recreate or distribute these tasks so that the salary, the independent salary worker here can actually run these tasks. I think what we've got to remember here and what I'm trying to highlight by creating this independent salary worker, when we don't simply just copy the Django code base over to the salary worker, we leave ourselves in a situation where we have to consider how we're going to share tasks. And another thing to consider also, and to remember is that potentially what well, the actual worker is actually going to execute the task. So here in the Django app, if we were going to pass it to this independent salary worker here, the actual task that we need to define might be something like this. But of course, actually on the worker, we'd actually need to define the actual task that needs to be completed. So one approach we could take here, for example, is that on our salary worker, we could create a new folder just replicate the folder system we have here in Django. So this is going to be new app. Inside of new app, we're going to have a file which is going to be called task.py. In task.py, that's obviously going to be this right here. We're going to add that in. So we're just replicating the task here on the Django app inside this independent salary worker that so knows what task or can find the task and it can then execute the task. Now, what else we might need to do here is actually make these discoverable for our salary application in the salary worker here. So let's go into the salary task here. So now we have some tasks here in the salary worker. Let's just remove the add numbers task. That just leaves us with the new app task there. Now we're not going to register them. We're not going to do anything special here. We're not going to uh, auto discover them. Um, so we're just going to leave it as is. And I'm just going to create the new containers. You don't have to follow me at this point. I'll just quickly go ahead and create the containers to see what we have at this point. So unsurprisingly, tar salary one can see both tasks, but salary two doesn't have any tasks registered. So let's navigate back into salary worker here, independent salary worker, salary task. Let's go ahead and apply a setting. So app.config. Now, obviously in Django, we have the Django apps, which are registered in the Django settings. So here we have app.config.import equals, and then we can go ahead and specify here new app.tasks. We could also apply the apps auto discovery tasks at this point, but we should just have to apply apps.config.imports. So let's give that a go. So I'll go ahead and try this out. It's a, a new build. Give it a couple of seconds. Have a look at the container. So we're specifically looking at Celery 2. So back in Celery 2, look at the logs here. I'm unable to load Celery application. <laughs> okay. Um, not too sure I've done that. But 
It looks like I made a, a mistake. Okay. Uh, so app. Okay. I'm getting mixed up again. So app.conf. Sorry. So you don't need config. It's just the UNF. Apologies. So let's just re-roll that. Recreate that. And you can see now Celery 2 has come back up. And we now have task 2 registered. So now we need to open up a new terminal in the Django container. So let's do exactly that. And let's go into the shell. And now we can from new app, our Django app, from new app uh, dot tasks. Let's go ahead and import task one and task two. So remember task one should be completed and routed to the Q1 which is the Celery Worker 1, and then task 2 to the Celery Worker 2. Right, so let's go task 1 dot delay. Focus OK, and task 2 dot delay. OK, so it looks good so far. Let's go back into our container. So Celery 1 looks like it has completed, that received. And it succeeded. So it received new app task one. That's what it just processed, task one. And if we go back into our celery two here, it didn't do anything at all in actual fact. Well, it did. No, it's up here. Apologies. So it's up here. So we have received uh, task two and has successfully then processed task two. There we go.